Hi, I'm Brad with Kickstarter PPC, and in this video, we're going to be showing you how to properly forecast how much inventory you should be buying when you launch a new product. So let's get into it. Before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We have a ton of Amazon PPC and FBA content up and coming that you won't want to miss out on, as well as a lot of previous content that you should definitely check out if you want to help improve your Amazon business. So. Firstly, what you want to be doing is looking in the Product Opportunity Explorer within Sell Essential and then going into the actual category that you're going to sell in. So, for example, select the actual category, say it's Home and Kitchen, Curtains, um, and then Window, Curtain Panels. And what you want to do is you want to look at, for that marketplace, what is the unit sold for this market? And as you can see, for example, last year, September 2023, 2.6 million units sold within that category. If, for example, you're going to be selling products a bit more niche, maybe they're doing 5% of what that is as a market. You need to be able to distinguish, you know, from that overall category, how relevant you are as the, the category itself, or are you kind of in a subcategory to that? So you need to kind of factor that into your forecasting but it's important to know what the numbers for the category are. So you can look into this, build up a forecast, whether it be six months, a year, get the number of units sold, just put it in a spreadsheet so you know exactly what the whole market's looking like, and then you can start to calculate what a piece of that would look like. You also wanna look at what the actual click-through rates are. So for example, September had a lot more clicks than um, it normally does. So at this point, you probably have a lot more in interest being generated. You can click to your and your data so you can see as well, um, that's already showing on here, but you can see that it's improved in terms of uh, units sold. It's improved year on year. And you will be able to, I guess, look at uh, the previous 12 months here, see is there any trends like in terms of sales being better in certain months, map those out, figure out which months are better where you're going to have the most search volume, get your most popular keywords here. So actually go in, look what the cost per click are for those keywords, because these are the things that are going to help you rank for the category. And you need to be aware of that before you start figuring out what product to launch in that category and also deciding what the PPC budget is going to be. Because if you do have a very high amount of search volume on a keyword, chances are the bid is going to be quite expensive. And these terms are very broad, so they are, with the exception of this one, going to be quite expensive to run PPC for. It's good to know all the facts, good to know that before you actually get into this. Now, same goes, you can look at uh, page views here, um, and then on, on this side, if you do wanna get click-through rates, so easy way you can do it is just put all the month data in there, so February, January, whatever months you wanna be comparing against, so say you're gonna launch in September, maybe try and grab September data from last year if you can. If you don't have that, then maybe look at similar times of the year. And that will just give you an idea on uh, what the cl average click-through rate was, what the search volume was, what the, the market was for that month. And you can just get a better clear idea on what you need to do. Now, the next thing you wanna do is actually look at what the top competitors are doing in terms of search volume. So it's a little bit difficult to do because you're not 100% how the data is because you're relying upon third parties. Whilst Amazon's data is pretty good. You've got all of the data within Amazon and you can count on that as it is Amazon's data. But for example, you want to find out what these, uh, these products are selling. And the best way to do this is actually to just go into the listing itself. This part here where it says 6,000 units bought that's probably your most accurate indicator, but there are other things you can do. So for example, you can click into this and then you can go into Jungle Scouts and from Jungle Scout, you can then go ahead and pull um, that information. So it's being a little bit slow. And then you can look at the parents. So you also wanna be looking at not just what the top seller is because this product has quite a few reviews, it's got 12,000. If you're launching, you probably wanna be looking at products with maybe three to 500 reviews. That's where you can make the most dent the most quick. So you wanna be looking at those. But if you wanna look at what the top sellers are doing, 
you can go into this, look at units sold, and you can kind of see over the holiday period, they did pretty well. They dropped off towards the summer, which is kind of expected. You're not spending as much time inside at this time of year, but you can see where the trends are and you can better forecast based on the performance that they had, you will have spikes around that time. So this is just another way that you can solidify your results that you've got from the Product Opportunity Explorer. Now, the next thing you need to be doing is getting keyword search volume. So actually put in the, the ASIN itself, put it into Cerebro and figure out what keywords are selling what search volume. So for example, Deskland is getting 161,000 in search volume. You can see that there's a number of terms that aren't getting much uh, traction there. But if you maybe click on uh, search volume here, you can see like desk, that's not very relevant to desk lamp, but you, you see there's a number of broad terms getting a lot of search volume. And in that suggested bid, you can kind of see, right, the bid is not too bad. It's, it's definitely higher than it was about a month ago, but it's it's at a, a reasonable level. A dollar sixteen. if you can sell the product at a reasonable price with a reasonable conversion rate, makes sense. It's not overly expensive compared to other keywords within the Amazon. But obviously, you do need to create the SKU, set up some campaigns, and just see in the Seller Central tab, what is the bidding range? Does it match up to... 48 cents to a dollar, maybe it's showing above two. So you need to verify that as well and just make sure alongside the search volume that it makes sense for this product. But at least with the forecasting of inventory side, you can see if you are gonna be going after say desk lamp, you have 161,000 search volume. And based on the, the data from the product opportunity explorer, the average click through rate is 10%, for example, so you can, you can expect if you were to go after 100% of the market, you would get so and so many clicks, and then you can target a specific proportion of that market. So, so there are a number of ways you can line this up and make sure you have as accurate a figure as you can when it comes to launching the product. You obviously have to have everything else in, in order as well. You need to have your uh, product at a good standard. You need the right price. You need reviews to actually get the product to convert better. And you need just a general good offer. You need the listing, the PPC to be relevant, a lot of things that go into an Amazon business. But obviously forecasting the stock, if you are gonna have all those things in order, makes a lot of sense to use these three methods. Now, to actually manage your uh, restocking and make sure you don't run out of stock, this is what we do next. Something that we use for our clients to be able to properly forecast new stock for existing products is Scale Insights. And this is a platform we use for not only PPC management, but we can give our clients a really good idea for existing products when they should be restocking inventory. So we give them access to Scale Insights as part of our service, and they can add in information such as production time, freight time, they can get everything to be as close to the, the time frame that your supplier sets. And this will give you the ability to say, okay, in 25 days, you need to place that reorder you have 115 days of supply. It's never gonna be completely perfect because spikes happen in terms of sales. Things aren't always gonna be completely perfect when it comes to the supply chain, but at least you can get things as close as possible. So this will base it on your stock that's an FBA and the lead times you put in. So it's very easy to keep track of, know which products are running out of stock and gives you a bit more control of your business. So. If you do want to use this, we do have a coupon code below, Scale Insights, with a 30-day free trial without need for a credit card and a lifetime 10% discount. So it's worth checking out, see if it can help your inventory management situation, particularly with all of these new fees that come with running out of stock. We hope you found that helpful and hopefully it allows you to better manage your existing products as well as forecast better for the new products you're going to bring online. Obviously, it's hard to forecast everything perfectly, which is why I thought I'd give you three of the methods I use with my clients so you've got the best chance of getting the most accurate forecast you can within the parameters of Amazon. If you need help with your Amazon PPC, you can contact us below, kickstartpvc.com, and schedule an audit with us. We'll have a chat about your account and see if there's a way we can help. 
But until the next video, hope you guys have a good one and we'll see you soon.